Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's me, John Avenger, once again, and uh, welcome to the month of April. Uh, I'm doing a uh, the whole month dedicated to movies with robots, since Age of Ultron is coming in a few weeks, and I can't wait, and that robot is going to be epic. I decided to, you know, give some of my thoughts on these movies that have robots. They can be any kind of movie with robots, whether it be animated or action movies or sci-fi films or... Uh, you know, anything, just as long as it's not the Star Wars films, because I've already reviewed those. So I want to give some other films a chance. First, I'm going to start with this classic from 1987 that a lot of people know about. And a lot of people, you know, really do uh, love and it did not need a remake. And that was the original RoboCop. Yep. This is the steelbook of the uh, 20th anniversary DVD, and uh, I bought it on Amazon a long time ago. But this this the movie is a classic, you know, a classic uh, story of you know a man, a cop that goes, you know, is in Detroit that uh, you know busts a bunch of guys in like a, a warehouse or something like that, and then they kill him off, and you know they brutally murder him, and in bloody fashion, which was missing in the remake. Um, but I'll get to that later. Um, you know, uh, they bring him back to life with these spare robotic parts, and they turn him into RoboCop. Basically, you, people have seen this movie. They know what it's about. But I did not see this movie R-rated until years later, because I saw this movie when I was a kid on TV when it was cut, and I didn't notice how violent it really was. So I was like, wow. And uh, a lot of people say, a lot, a lot of people who have seen this movie knows that this movie has held up for over 20 years. It'll be 30 years old in 2017. The The visual effects in this movie still hold up very well. The only kind of iffy uh, special effect is uh, when Dick Jones falls out of the window. It kind of looks like a puppet. It doesn't look right. It looks stupid. But the movie still works. The suit in this and the visual effects, the stop motion of uh, Ed 209 and the gore, it just it's elevated more than any any remake could have done and just peter weller's performance is what is not robotic in this movie it's not chin action it's real acting behind that suit that suit was heavy and it was really rough and you know he he lost a lot of weight doing that role he put himself into that performance and the robot you know it still looks good the the that suit the silver suit in the original film and then the blue suit in the second film still look great they don't look to like a toy it looks awesome the score of this film still works it's just memorable you get pumped when you see robocop kicking ass in the film there's a, a lot of great actors in this film besides peter weller you got nancy allen as as ann lewis who's just great in the role and screw the third movie because they kill her off in, the, in a stupid way um, you got, uh, what was his name, Kurtwood Smith, who um, plays the villain Boddicker, Clarence Boddicker, who's a very memorable villain. You got uh, Ronnie Cox as uh, as Dick Jones. It's just a classic movie. There are, there are reasons that I love this movie and I hate the freaking remake. The remake missed the whole point of what this movie was about. It skipped the violence and made it PG-13, so it didn't, it had no intensity in the in the action. The film was boring and way too long. It was even longer than the original. Three, the actor, Joe, can I get a what, what, couldn't tie Peter Weller's freaking shoes. He was wooden and boring and just hit robotic, to, you know, no pun intended. Uh, the, the remake, just it just the CGI took me out of it. It just looked like District 9 and, and the Total Recall remake and a bunch of other films. And... Uh, the film just the, the black suit looked like shit. I hated the freaking score. The villains are not memorable. It's like, oh, it's Michael Keaton and this guy named Valian who you completely forget about. This film did it right. It didn't need a remake. This is how you do it. No CGI whatsoever. The stop motion still looks great. The film flows very well. It doesn't take an hour for something to happen. When guys get shot, you feel it. Uh, you know, the the ending is triumphant when you see him kill Boddicker and stab him right in the neck and the gore is just pouring out of him. And then when he shoots Dick Jones out the window, yeah, the, the special effect looks kind of clunky, but it's a satisfying ending. Paul Verhoeven's directing is what he, this movie needed. The, that schmuck that did the remake didn't know how to direct 
an action film with the shaky cam, shaking the camera like this and uh, doing jump cuts and just filming things in the dark. You know, it just did everything wrong. I mean, the remake. I mean, this is how you do it. You know, you can never top the originals. The remakes always are trying to do something, you know, oh, let's just, excuse me, let's just like copy the original. That's what the Poltergeist remake is going to do in May, and I have no interest. You cannot top the creepiness of the first film, which, well, that's another story for another day. But, yeah, the original is where it's at. Even if you like the remakes of previous films that, that you know, that are remakes to the original, when you remake a R-rated film into a P-13 film, it never works. It didn't work with RoboCop. It did not work with Total Recall. And it will not work with the Poltergeist remake. Uh, well, the Poltergeist, I think if it was... If it was released now, it would have been an R rating back in the day, in the early 80s. But anyway, this is about RoboCop. Yeah, this film just holds up. The the, the freaking action sequences are really intense. Uh, you know, uh, the, his gun, his freaking Auto 9, is still one of the most badass guns in film history. Uh, you know, the, the acting's not clunky, and there's no shaky cam. You can see what's going on. You can feel everything that's going on. The atmosphere, you know... The family moments here are not forced, like in the freaking remake, where, you know, they, they want to push you to feel something, push you to feel something. Here, they showed the scenes with his family in the past, and then you feel it in his face. The expression of Peter Weller's mouth, that's enough for me. You don't need to show the actor's face completely to show emotion. You know, he does a spectacular job, and nobody could top him at all. And... The fact that this movie, yeah, the, the first one is the only one that got good treatment on DVD, and I'm glad that it was re-released, um, I think, last year. Yeah, and uh, the unrated version, basically, it just it, it makes scenes a little bit longer. Uh, the Ed 209 scene is a little bit longer. That scene, if I had seen that as a kid, I would have been shocked. I would like, oh, my God, this guy gets shot to pieces. It's, like, it's insane. And the remake didn't even have that. The Ed 209s don't even shoot people. It's like they're in the streets, patrolling the streets, and there's no blood. And I'm not saying that blood makes a movie, but in this movie, it worked. You know, you can't pussify a movie that's not meant for kids. RoboCop, for whatever reason, appealed to kids, and yet the movie's not for kids. The first two films are very bloody, and they're very adult-oriented. They're not for kids. Don't ever show a kid this movie until they're, like, old enough to handle violence because my parents were like that and they did not let me watch R-rated movies unless I was with, you know, my uncle or aunt or, you know, in the in the a company of an adult because, you know, some content can really scar a kid. And I'm, I saw this movie on TV when I was a kid. It didn't scar me. I saw the violence later as an adult and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I waited until I was an adult so I can understand. But yeah, uh, this robot movie is freaking awesome. 87 was a great year for films because you had this and Predator and, and a bunch of other stuff and Lethal Weapon. Just, wow. If they only made a robot movie like this today, it would be awesome. I know Ultron's not going to be R-rated, but, hey, at least it's going to have more intensity than the remake of this. This movie's a classic. It shouldn't have been touched. It's awesome. And if uh, if you want to get the film, I would suggest you getting the Steelbook uh, DVD or the Blu-ray that had uh, that just got re-released um, that has the uh, unrated cut and the features. Because if you get the bare bones Blu-ray, it doesn't have anything on it, and it's not it's worth getting all these features. There's still some features I need to see. I heard the commentary by Paul Verhoeven, very very informative. Just well, that's RoboCop, great awesome action sci-fi movie with a robot with robots everywhere. You know, just. It's very, very authentic. It didn't need a remake. The remake can kiss my ass. It did everything wrong. It was the worst film I saw last year. This this film, no matter how old it gets, it will always live up to, you know, its reputation as being one of the best of the 80s. And Peter Weller is awesome. He's, he's just, you know, he's irreplaceable, let's face it. And that's all I got to say. So this is how I start the month of April with RoboCop as my first robot movie. The next time... I'll talk about the sequel, which I think is very underrated, RoboCop 2, the only good movie after the first one, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, I love that movie. Seeing it as a kid, I was kind of like, eh. Then I saw it as an adult. It grew on me, and I'll talk about that next time. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for giving me comments. 
and uh, sh showing your support to this channel. I need it. You know, it's always good to, you know, have some high spirits after, you know, so much boredom and so much, you know, pain that I had to go through in the winter. But thanks, guys, for watching. Later.